Hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl Sim back with another episode of The Sim Squad. Hi! Today I have like new perfumes for you. Uh, the sales have been going on, we've been milking them <laughs> and buying so many different perfumes. Like everything that was on my radar, like whether it was like, yeah, I kind of know I'm not going to like this perfume, but I want to review them anyways for you guys. Or they were like perfumes that were too expensive and then I was like, you know what, they're not worth that price, let it like come down a little bit and then I can review them for you. Those are also here today. Okay, so the first one <laughs> is Alive Now by Mason Alhambra. Everybody was like, buy it and let us know if this smells like Angel Noah. It does smell like Angel Noah. I'm going to do the comparison in a separate video, like where I can show you all the perfumes I have, like and if they're actual dupes, you know. That'll be an interesting one, so I'm going to do that for you like really, really soon. So for some very strange, surprising reasons, <laughs> Alive Now, it is not listed on Fragrantica. The bottle is like super cute. It has these cuts and everything, which normally like, you know, theory, uh, theory Mugler. Mugler perfumes like normally have these kind of bottles. So it's very clearly, even the color of it, it's uh, duping Angel Noah. You know what, I'm gonna do a separate video for that, but let me just show you the Angel Noah right now and do the comparison. So this is the Angel Noah, I got the 30ml and this is the Alive Now. Can you see the similarity in the color, the bottle? It's not the exact color, this one is like a warm pink, this one is like almost purple pink. But the scent, let's keep um, Alive this side and this side <laughs> and the Angel Noah on the other side. The bottle of Angel Noah is very pretty. I like like the, the stars. Okay, they're very, very similar, but they're definitely not dupes of each other. Like, Alive Now smells very much like uh, Mayar, you know? This is why I wanted to do a separate video, you know? Because like, I know like there are a lot of like perfumes duping the, this one. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to like confuse you guys, but let me just tell you for now how the uh, Angel Now smells like. Sorry, Alive Now. Oh my god. Alive Now is in the same family like Mayar. Okay, Alive Now smells sweet lychee kind of, rose lychee kind of perfume, but like with a green note, which is not rhubarb. It smells very fresh. It smells like a bouquet of flowers at the same time, but with the green bits in it as well. The top notes for this are Madagascar vanilla, plum, cinnamon, apple, and blackcurrant. Middle notes of jasmine, sambac, and thyme. And the base notes of woody notes, sandalwood, cedar, and olive tree. That's nonsense. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't smell like that at all. Now, the problem is like genuinely getting the notes for this. It's like kind of difficult, but I'll try and see if I can find like a comparative note because it smells very close to my art, okay, from Latafa. And if I have to like decide the closeness to Angel Noah, it is there. It's in the same family, but they're not dupes. So this is like the same kind of fragrance which I, exactly how I feel with my art. It is pretty, it is very nice. It's a fruity floral, but that green, like a lot of green notes, it smells like freshly cut uh, flower stems. You know, if you know the smell of that, it smells exactly like that. And they are wet, you know, so it has that this little wet greenness, which I don't appreciate. It's kind of almost like a freshly mowed grass, but then there are sprinklers going off. And you know that smell that comes out from the grass? It almost smells of that and I don't appreciate that scent. I like the smell of freshly cut grass, but I do not appreciate it in my perfumes. I don't like greenness in my perfumes. I know a lot of people don't mind it and some people even love it. But for me, like the greenness belongs in a different family, like with woody notes and like, you know, for men, maybe with spices and everything. I don't know, but for me, like florals and fruity fragrances with this green note just throws me off. So it's a very beautiful fragrance, no doubt. And for the price, I'm going to put the price over here because I know it's listed like in different prices. I think I had got it for around $25, which is like not bad at all. But that's a Mason Alhambra perfume. Also, it's like super difficult to find uh, this perfume now because in UAE, at least like Mason Alhambra is like closed, I think. And only the ones that are left over, the stocks, those are like going around in the market. So it's kind of difficult to find this one. Do I like it? Uh, I like it as a perfume on other people, but not on myself at all. I would never wear this. I would classify this as a fruity floral. 
It doesn't have any hints of spices. It has nothing like interesting happening. It's a very flat perfume. It's like a very linear perfume, just like a lot of fruity florals along with uh, the stems. It smells like I've entered a florist shop, you know, or, you know, when you make these fruit baskets along with like flowers and everything like to give to someone who's sick in the hospital. <laughs> you know, it smells like that. It's comforting. It's beautiful. But like, would I wear it? No. But I can see a lot of people wearing this and enjoying it because, yeah, it is a nice fragrance. It's just not for me. So let me be fair and give this like a 7 out of 10. Uh, it's definitely spring summer. It's like giving literally, if I say bouquet of flowers or a florist shop, it is like spring. It's like screaming sp spring. And you can wear this in summer as well. Will this be okay in winter? I guess so. If you want to wear it, I would never wear a fragrance like this in winter. Well, I would not wear this fragrance, but like, even if I like this perfume, I would not wear this in uh, uh, fall winter. In fall winter, I like to wear warm scents, not like fresh scents, you know. Uh, the celebrity I would give this to would be uh, probably like um, Ellie Fanning. Like, this is very like her, like, like a princess, a Disney princess, but who's a very young Disney princess. Like Snow White, literally because of the apple. I don't know why I'm thinking that again. I know I've given her like other perfumes as well that sim smells similar to this maybe i had given my yard to her i'm not sure there's no middle eastern vibe at all it's a very uh f fresh floral so it's it's definitely not giving me any middle eastern vibe the projection would be a good two feet and uh, the longevity i guess i would give it like four to five hours of like actual performance and then it will gradually fade away so although i'm not gonna wear this fragrance seven out of ten is not a bad score actually for a perfume like this I'm trying to go like to the mildest, to the darkest because there's some perfumes in here that are like, you know, crazy insane. And I'm going to save that crazy insane one for the last. Okay, so this is another one that everybody was asking me to review and I was like staying away from it. And my instincts were right. I knew I'm not going to like it and I do not like it much. This is Shura by Rasasi. Now guys, I've already sprayed these on my arms and I have smelled them for an entire day but today i'm gonna do it on uh perfume cards because i don't want to like spray any of these perfumes on myself so this is the bottle it's very basic now the thing is that this is like around 20 dollars or so it's a very old collection of rasasi and these are one of their budget perfumes right so they have like very expensive perfumes and then they have these that are like 15 20 dollars and uh if they're just okay for day-to-day -day wear and that's exactly what this is this is like a day-to-day -day perfume there are some people who absolutely find this like alluring and beautiful and they like kept telling me like you're gonna love this perfume it's reminding me of some perfume but i'm not sure what it's reminding me of <laughs> it's classified as a sheep flor floral and on fragrantica it's got 4.16 which is a good score right uh it smells like apparently tom ford white patchouli but i don't know why i feel like i have something like this in my collection i don't know if it's like rasasi sutur scene maybe uh, but something smells like this and I have it or is it, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. But this is one of those creamy, lotiony kind of scents uh, which are a little dark and mysterious. Definitely fall, winter. Uh, the top notes for this are sage and lemon. Middle notes of lily of the valley, jasmine and iris. And the base notes of patchouli, agarwood, musk and ambergris. Now, yes, it sounds very unique and the perfume definitely is quite unique. Maybe this perfume needs to grow on me, but like as of now, I am not like feeling it, you know, like I think it's a nice perfume, but and that's like kind of the case with this entire haul. Like I like them, but I know I'm not going to wear them. Like it's just going to be sitting and catching dust, you know, you know, it's like it's bothering me now because I can't figure out what it smells like and it's smelling so, so strongly of a perfume, which I, it's right there at the back of my mind, but I can't, I can't, I just can't remember it. The first time I smelled it, I was like, oh my god, dirty patchouli. Like, that's the first thing that came in my mind. Then comes, like, sugared lemon. Like, like imagine, like, a candied lemon. Actually, not even sugared lemon. A candied lemon, and then it has that sage, you know? Like, it's such a weird mix. But then at the base, it has that little bit of oud. And then it has these strong florals, like lily of the valley. A jasmine, iris, you know, like, iris, like, tends to make everything a little powdery. I don't know about the musk and ambergris. If they're there, they're like there, way at the back. But I can definitely smell like a super dirty patchouli and like a lot of sweetness with the tartness of lemon and and the aromatic of like sage. You know, it's like so strong, so like 
a little bit obnoxious you know like i that's the right word it's like i feel this is a little obnoxious you will smell nice and even if you like the smell like i don't know if it's gonna be like an easy blind buy but clearly i'm wrong because on fragrantica it's like 4.16 so people love this perfume and for 20 dollars it's like you can't go wrong with a perfume this strong and by the way it projects like four feet and lasts like six plus hours easily i think it touches eight hours so it's is it worth it yeah it's definitely worth it but do try it because i don't think this is a blind buy this would be like a perfume that you really need to get used to and even if people are like i can imagine if a girl comes next to me or a guy comes next, because i feel this is like a unisex fragrance leaning feminine like if a guy wears this or a girl wears this around me, I'm going to actually appreciate this on them. But to smell it all the time on myself for an entire day, like that's what the part that's bothering me. Although this has agarwood in it, like the Middle Eastern vibe check, it's like I would say no because it's it comes off as like a woody shipper kind of scent, you know. So sheep perfume, I can't say it properly because I'm not French, <laughs> but I'll, I'll put the pronunciation over here. It means having fresh and aromatic top notes with a woody mossy base, which is exactly what this perfume is right but then it has like a strong floral uh, middle notes <sighs> like again like it's nice but it's like just something i would not wear i'm gonna give this a 6.5 out of 10 like in my books like this is definitely not something i'll be wearing and i'll probably end up decluttering it like super soon but as of now no 6.5 out of 10 and the celebrity i'm gonna give this to is lily collins like literally her as well like you can take her to some extent and then after some time it's like an overdose <laughs> you know let me not hover around perfumes that i'm not actually enjoying too much the next one is from al haramein i kind of have a, like a nice mix of no actually i have very similar brands okay <laughs> this is al haramein bel rouge or belle rouge or bella rouge i don't know like it's bel rouge i think uh this perfume bottle <laughs> i love it so much it's such a cute bottle so the front part the rosy part it's a rubbery okay and at the back you can see the name that's the bottle it's a very cute bottle like immediately you're like because there's a rose on it you're like oh my gosh this is gonna be a rosy perfume and this is categorized as an amber floral the sprayer is very directional okay so this is compared to YSL Libre now I am a diehard fan of Libre so of course I was like I want to see this now the thing is I have Libre but I have the uh, Le Parfum the Le Parfum version and I have a 30 ml because that's the only one I could afford I'm gonna spray both of them and I'm gonna tell you if it smells anything like this one yeah they're very similar yep definitely like actually I would not say okay it smells like Le Parfum so I am assuming this is a dupe for the Le Parfum oh my gosh they're very similar except for the Libre it has that like little freshness that's not present and freshness and coldness that's not present in Belle, uh, Belle Rouge but I really like this scent like I am definitely going to use it it was dirt cheap it was like I bought it for like $16 like that's nothing right and it's a 50 ml I think but like I don't care it's like still I think it's a 50 ml but I don't care oh no it's a 75 ml so that's not bad like for a for a good brand I mean it's like Al Harabain and like I, I thought it was gorgeous you know like the bottle the packaging the perfume so the top notes for this are lemon orange grapefruit mandarin orange and pear uh, middle notes of lavender jasmine rose peach and blackcurrant and the base notes of vanilla tonka bean musk vetiver sandalwood and cedar it is so beautiful now the thing is like people would reserve this for spring summer in my opinion i can wear this in winter as well but during daytime you know fall winter so i'm gonna get good use out of this perfume it smells like fruity fresh but it's very creamy it's very creamy but then it has that lavender so it's slightly aromatic it kind of gives it that uh, little tangent from going towards creamy florals you know it's like a mix of everything like the top notes are super fresh like it's all fruits and especially that pear note which i like in uh, both lantidi and in uh, libre it's it's like it's it's that fresh note which i don't know if it's a culmination of all these fresh uh, fruits that i've added in the top note and the middle note definitely it's like uh, lavender jasmine rose it's 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 very reminiscent of uh, libre but it has it has this like very nice creamy thing going on in the background which is the kind of deviation from libre so it's like i would not say it's a hundred percent dupe but side by side they smell very similar but bell rouge like changes during the dry down like even in the middle notes like i can tell you that libre has that freshness so Libre for me is one of my favorite perfumes, the Le Parfum, right? 
it is something when I wear it, I just feel good. I feel it's fresh, it's attractive. It's the same thing I feel with Lantadi. Now, I know those perfumes are not for everybody. I know not a lot of people don't like Libre. A lot of people don't like Lantadi, the original, yeah? But for me, these perfumes are like, it feels like a classic perfume. I like this fragrance. Like, I know like a lot of people don't like the lavender in it, but it's, it's a beautifully done lavender. And I don't think it leans masculine at all. Same with Belle Rouge. It's kind of gone. <laughs> or maybe I'm just becoming anosmic now. Yeah, so the opening is like super fruity, super fresh. And then like slowly, slowly, like during the middle notes, you get the flowers and it's like creamy flowers. But like the stark difference between the opening and the middle base notes, it's like so clever. And I quite like this perfume. So I'll definitely, this will probably go into my like uh, summer collection fragrances, but I'll be wearing this in winter as well. Plus kudos to the packaging. It looks so cute. I was in the pictures it looked darker and I wish it was a little darker because this orangey red kind of thing is like kind of like those classic lipsticks but at the same time no, I think I know why they chose this red because of that classic nature of this fragrance you know is it like revolutionary or something no but it I bought it for $16 and I'm assuming it'll be around $20 for you guys so it's not like a very uh, <laughs> difficult decision it's an easy blind buy for me even if you don't like Libre, I think you're going to like this because this is a little bit deeper, a little bit more creamy, a little bit more uh, that freshness has reduced quite a bit in the dry down, you know. This for me, surprisingly, in my papers, I have written 7 out of 10, but I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. It's a beautiful fragrance. I am going to get like a lot of use out of it. On Fragrantica, it's got 4.09, which is not like the greatest, but it's still not bad. And it's categorized as an amber floral. And the celebrity I want to give this to was uh, Selma Blair. Bl Selma Blair. Little bit of tongue twister that is, isn't it? Selma Blair, you know, she's like quirky, dark, feminine, but at the same time, she has this uh, aura about her, which is like classic, you know? You look at her, she has that very classic face. I absolutely love her. Like she, I think she's a very talented actress. Plus a very strong human being for actually going through what she's going through and being so courageous about it, you know. Middle Eastern vibe check is none. The longevity is like two feet. Projection is like six uh, hours at least, if not more. Uh, I'm definitely getting nose blind because when I sprayed it on myself, it lasted the entire day almost. But six hours of decent performance. The next one is another perfume. Everyone was like, get it, get it, get it. And I was like, no, no, no. And then I finally bit the bullet. Again, just because of the sale, you know. I always keep telling people like I'm brown and whenever there's sale, I end up buying things I don't need. You know, it's just a brown thing to do. So this is Hava Spy. Uh, I want to say Rasasi. <laughs> yeah, Rasasi. <laughs> oh gosh. So this is like the season of Rasasi and uh, Al Haramain, isn't it? The bottle is like cute. I don't mind it at all. The cap is like very beautiful. So this is categorized as a floral and on Fragrantica it's got 4.26 which is a lot. That means people actually like this perfume. I remember there was a, this perfume had gone viral so everybody was using it. There was a time everybody just like was like hovers, like anybody you asked what are you wearing they were like hovers, you know. For female and for men they have like this purplish blue one that also is like very very popular right. And I thought I'll get it for Ali but then I spent the money on something else I bought it for myself. Like, am I happy with this perfume? Um, <laughs> this is like unpopular opinion, let's just call it. I do not like this fragrance at all. It's nice, it's fruity. Like, this is like, they say it smells like Lancome's Love Your Belle. And I would probably agree, it's in the same DNA. They also compare it to Irresistible by uh, Givenchy and Donna Bon in Roma. Now, yeah, while it is in the same DNA, it's like a floral, like, just like a normal floral so i don't know what the big deal is like i don't understand because when i bought this perfume i was like ah oh, love your bell you know like that's why i was staying away from it but then i was like why is it so popular especially when i saw the ratings of 4.26 on fragrantica i was like dude you know I'm, I'm definitely missing out on something especially after the casablanca whole thing you know when i smelled it i was like why didn't i buy this before you know so i like gave into the hype and i personally do not like this fragrance exactly the same reason why i don't like love your bell and that's why I never bought Donna, Bon and Roma, you know, or like any of these other florals from these brands, you know. The top notes for this are apple, pomegranate and grapefruit. Middle notes of iris, jasmine, sambac and citruses. And the base notes of praline, patchouli and vetiver. So yes, this is again, 
super heavy on patchouli, super heavy on florals. That's about it. That, there's nothing. It's sweet, yeah, and that praline thing, you can actually feel it like praline. The apple, pomegranate, grapefruit, it's just like, it's so overshadowed by the florals that I can't really like smell them. Like initial blast, yes, you feel like it's a fruity fragrance, but you cannot identify apple, pomegranate and grapefruit separately. At least to my nose, right? Now, I don't know, I might wear it, I might, but like, I'm gonna keep it for some time. I'm gonna keep it for at least six months. I do this with all my perfumes, like, even with Alive, I'll probably like keep it for some time and see if I'm gonna change my mind because sometimes you regret then, you know, <laughs> like you said, you get rid of a perfume and then you're like, you know what, like I'm kind of liking that DNA and I wish I didn't declutter it, you know, like I have so many beautiful, beautiful fragrances there and for me to recommend something to you also, it needs to be super beautiful, otherwise I will not like just recommend something that smells like a million other DNAs and I think that's what is not attracting me because it smells very uh, very generic. I really don't see the appeal in this one. Sorry guys. So this is like an absolute no for me. It's definitely super feminine and it, it retails for $45. So it doesn't come very cheap, but it's one of the cheapies, right? I think this is okay for any weather because it's a floral. Uh, spring, summer, of course, it would shine better. But in winter, also, I don't think it's a bad perfume to wear during winter. The projection is like two feet and the longevity, I would say five hours and then it'll reduce a lot. Performance is not the best, you know. Four, five hours, I would say. My rating for this, it's not a bad perfume, but I would still rate it like six out of 10 because of the same tang, same tang, <laughs> same thing. That's like a generic perfume. So I, it doesn't appeal me at all. And the celebrity I want to give this to was uh, Tessa Thompson. Get the same feeling from her. It's like, I don't know. I don't want to say anything negative about anybody, but like, yeah, it reminds me of her. The Middle Eastern vibe check and that, by the way, is zero. It leans very, very, very Western. Like think... Donna Bon and Roma and La Via Belle, that family. So if you like those fragrances, if you love those fragrances, definitely go for this. But if you're like me and you do not like those kind of generic perfumes. Now, last but not the least, this is <laughs> this was on my radar, right? Like I was like, like literally like, you know, <laughs> I have to buy it, I have to buy it. And I was waiting for the price to go down because Al Haraman, this range, the prices just don't go down. This is Al Haraman Amber Oud, but this is the tobacco edition. The packaging is like stunning, like Al Haraman, like they know how to do their packaging, right? It's a very hard box, it's very heavy. You have this metallic plaque over here, which is like the brass or this is not a copper color, I guess this is like the brassy color. And then the bottle itself is, I got the 60 ml and still it was quite pricey, but that's the bottle. It again has that metallic plaque and then you have like literally nothing at the back. I think it's very cute. Now, I remember smelling this perfume in the store, right? And I was very impressed. I smelled this and I was like, to the guy who was showing me the perfumes, I was like, bro, this smells amazing. And he was kind of looking at me funny because this is meant to be a masculine fragrance. And I was like, no, it is like so good. I would wear it and everything. And he was like, yeah, it's one of our popular ones. This to me, it smells like a much stronger version <laughs> of... Uh, Kiali's uh, Oud Tobacco, but like amplify it like maybe a hundred times, hundred, I'm not kidding. It is so potent, you get like a mixture. Think of a mixture of uh, spices like clove, cardamom, cinnamon in a bag mixed with uh, a whole pistachios, almonds, like dried fruits as well, like resin, raisins and uh, what are the dry fruits are the apricot and i don't know shake the bag and open it it smells like like i can like literally tell you that this smells like the most dominant scent in this is not tobacco it's a clove <laughs> so this is considered to be a spicy amber perfectly like categorized on fragrantica it's got 4.33 which is like quite a bit and i can vouch for this perfume like big time it's a beautiful fragrance is it feminine no <laughs> So this is apparently a dupe for Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille and I don't know how Tobacco Vanille smells like and I know there are a lot of dupes for it everywhere around like especially amongst the Middle Eastern uh, brands. I wouldn't say Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille would be an original because this DNA in the Middle East has been going on for quite some time. The tobacco with uh, uh, the dried fruits and uh, spices. It is heavily Middle Eastern leaning by the way. Let me tell you the notes for this. The notes are on the top, tobacco leaf, which is 
well, which is conveniently decided to disappear on me. I can smell it, but I can't really smell smell it. It's like, it doesn't smell like tobacco. It smells like tobacco leaf. Yeah. So the next note is cinnamon, black pepper and ginger. Middle notes of vanilla, clove, star anise, cacao, tonka bean and incense. And the base notes are now tobacco, not the tobacco leaf, dried fruits and woodsy notes. Think of all these notes. <laughs> you put it in a bag, shake it. <laughs> Along with like dried fruits. Like, have they mentioned dried fruits? Yeah, they have mentioned dried fruits. So, but then of course it has like the little sweetness of tonka. You have your woodsy notes. Incensiness is there a little bit. A little bit. It's not bothering me at all. I'm surprised it doesn't have, uh, it's, they say woodsy notes, but they have not mentioned oud. So I don't think this has oud. But you know what? If you layer this with oud, it's going to become a very, very good fragrance. So I definitely think I can wear this. It is very masculine, but I will wear it because I loved it. And I will probably layer it with oud and I'm going to wear it. You know what? Let me layer this with Badial oud, oud for glory and see how it, I, what I feel about it. So I have my oud for glory over here. Just going to spray one because that's oud. And this one is your amber oud. Why did they name it Amber Oud when there's no Oud in it, you know? See? Oh my god! I found a layering combination! <laughs> that is stunning! Oh my gosh! Okay, so already on its own, for me, this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance. Like, I have no doubt about it. Like, I'm so happy I bought this. Despite of the eyebrow raises I was getting in the shop, you know, like, what is she doing? It is so gorgeous and I can get why this is like so hyped up like i do not like this is an unpopular opinion right like i do not like any of the other amber oud fragrances i don't know about the new one because they have like white edition and they have like the purple one as well i've not tried those but the red one is like a dupe for the rouge that's like a dupe for baccarat rouge then there's another the original one amber oud gold that one is like for herba pura and you know me with herba pura dna and the baccarat rouge dna i don't want them anymore so this is like a gorgeous fragrance and layering this with any oud fragrance like even with the oud mood or like i'm just thinking of all the combinations i can do with this with any oud along with this i think also with amethyst it's gonna elevate amethyst to a different level amethyst already is like the queen of fragrances for me i love 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 it like i uh, bow to it it's like i love that fragrance so much adding this to that it'll be like a guy married the guy was wearing this and he married like uh, the king married this queen with who wears amethyst and then they you know had babies you know <laughs> like so cool i love it i love this fragrance so much it's like a 10 out of 10 for me and i would associate oh wait wait let me tell you the other stuff first okay so on fragrantica it's got 4.33 it's supposed to be a unisex so it's classified as unisex the retail price is usd 65 over here uh, I don't know how much it costs elsewhere, but I got it on discount and it was like around $45, which is not bad at all. Uh, I would give this a nighttime perfume for any weather, but it'll be much more appropriate to wear this in fall winter. Middle Eastern vibe check is heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. It doesn't have oud, but I would still say it is like 80% leaning Middle Eastern, right? The projection is like a five feet projection and this is the longevity is like eight plus. It's a monster. It's a monster. It's like a monster perfume it's gonna like last the next day you know you're gonna sleep with it next day if you don't take a shower if you don't wash your clothes next day you'll still keep smelling of this it's gonna go on and on and on and on you know when i say projection of dubai to tokyo this is one of those you know like monster ones and the celebrity i'd given this to was jason momoa i have no idea why by the way jason momoa like you know there's some celebrities i think i for me i feel towards them like asexual you know so jason momoa is that and any guy i feel like asexual towards they become like a brotherly figure for me so hugh jackman is one of them uh the rock is one of them and jason momoa i know i know, I know. a lot of you all are going to be surprised like no i don't i don't find him attractive like that he's a very good looking man but like like for me this is like i feel he would smell like this like he's very like again you he has this exotic face yeah exotic thing about him which looks like very nice I don't know why I choose people the way I do, but it just comes in my head and I just blurt it out. <laughs> so this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance. I'm so happy. Like literally you see my mood change, like from the initial alive and then I was actually not alive. And then like towards the end where I'm wearing this one and I'm like so thrilled with it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy I have this perfume in my collection. Ali did not like it because Ali does not like dried fruit 
spicy kind of fragrances. He likes the bro bro kind of fragrances. So he doesn't like Middle Eastern leaning fragrances, just to let you know. So yeah, that's it for today, guys. That was an interesting haul. <laughs> and I remember that I told you in the previous video or one of the videos where I tried the Khamra and I told you that I will try to see if Khamra layered with French coffee, Al Rihab, does it smell the same as Gahwa? It does not. They're north and south. So just like putting it out there, because I know I missed uh, saying that in that video. I'll put it in the description of that video as well so that people don't like come for me, you know. But no, it's not. Like you will have to buy the kahwa to experience the kahwa, you know. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I did. I enjoyed it a lot. And I can't wait to do the next one and bring more and more new perfume to you guys, yeah. Please forgive me every time I disappear because uh, like most of you all do know that I suffer from fibromyalgia. Maybe my new followers do not know that. And sometimes I'm just bedridden. Like I just cannot answer comments. Like comments, if I have to ever answer anywhere, it would be on YouTube. Like please, please do not mind if I do not answer you on Instagram or Facebook because I do not like typing on my phone. You know, I, I like typing on my computer and like I don't like sitting with that. And especially like when my body is hurting and everything, it's too tough on me like physically and mentally. So like, yeah, just laying it out there and letting you guys know that I'm not ignoring you. I read each and every comment of yours, but to reply to each and every one would be insane for me, right? So please forgive me for that. It's not on purpose. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Let me not blab on and try and make videos under 30 minutes. <laughs> that would be my resolution for 2024. <laughs> see you guys. Bye.